Hey y'all, it's Terry from Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush, and today we are going to discuss the differences between Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint, DIY Clay-Based Paint, and Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint. I grabbed out some chip brushes, so all things will be equal when I demo them, and I have an old cabinet door. Let me see if I can move this way a little bit. There we go. So I'll try them on here, and I'll talk about them, and we'll go from, from there. Let's do the DIY first. DIY was like my first intro into the, well, my second intro, actually. Um, Annie Sloan is what I tried first at a scrapbooking event, but as far as me you know, buying a thing of paint and painting a piece of furniture. Um, DIY is the first um, chalky style. You know, we're not allowed to say chalk paint with anything else. Uh, Annie Sloan owns that term. That's why you see them called chalky, chalky base, chalk mineral, all these other things is because we're just not allowed to say chalk paint. But the DIY is a clay based paint. So it has chalk in it too, of course, of course, which is calcium carbonate. The reason that that's put in the paints, let me go back a little bit further, how I started with this after I used the Annie Sloan was buying my own uh, plaster of Paris to use as calcium carbonate and adding it to Sherwin-Williams wall paint. And I painted a lot of things that way and trying to be cheap. And it really doesn't save that much and it's it's a pain which is why i started looking for paints that i could just buy already done this is diy this particular color is sea glass it's very very thick very thick creamy luscious all the things that that you may would want to call it so it's about like pancake batter, I guess would be a good way to put it. And it has good coverage. Their, their claim to fame is like eight ingredients. And one of those is love and all that cute stuff, but that's the truth. And there's not a lot, you know, there's not toxic stuff added to this, I guess is, is the way to put it. There's, there's not toxic stuff added and that's the reason, that's what drew me to it to begin with. And so you can see, hopefully you can see, because I know I'm a little distance away, that it's, it's pretty dang thick. And that's what the, you know, the chalk and the clay do. Now this is going to dry to, see how thick that is on there? This is going to dry to a dusty, matte looking finish and dry lighter than it is when it's darker. Let me just put some on here. Can you see that? It has really good coverage because of the amount of pigments that are in there. And that's why with this particular paint, it's very good for painting fabrics and things like that because it doesn't have any kind of acrylic base or anything in it. It's mostly just pigments and clay and chalk so you're gonna it's gonna go a long ways it's gonna create almost like a stucco terracotta type of clay finish but so it has good coverage it's goes on most anything without having to have any type of you know sanding or prep ahead of time you can paint on you know glass and plastic and wood and and all the things that you can do with with most of the chalky style paints but the plus and the minuses are this is really good for sort of blending if I had another color here to come up into and things like that because this is going to stay wet and stay workable by me misting it for as long as I want to use it and that's the plus and the minus because if I was to leave this here for a week and go on vacation and come back and I'll show you what my husband does he comes out of the bathroom like a fool going like this that man don't know how to use a hand towel 
that's what happened to the top of the first desk that I painted with this and then the little water spots were all over it. It reactivated the paint and I had to paint the whole thing over again. So that's a plus and a minus. My tip for using this paint is to put a top coat on between each coat. That's an extra step, but you can use a spray on top coat. You can use one of their natural top coats or whatever, but that's gonna seal the paint because until you seal the paint, water's gonna reactivate it and it's gonna come back up. If I was to let this completely dry, then come back with another coat, the moisture in this second coat is going to reactivate the paint underneath it. And instead of me having two colors layered here, one on top of each other where I could go back and sand a little bit and the other one show, they're gonna blend and mix and make a muddy mess under there. And unless you're, you know, a beautiful artist like, you know, Dion or somebody who perfectly knows how to do that, it's a little bit harder. It can be done because obviously, you know, I've done it, she does it, but it, it's not as simple for a person just starting out. If you put a thin coat of top coat on this coat, when it dries, I can come back and put anything I want to on it because the top coat's gonna seal it. So it requires an extra step sometimes, but you're able to do things with it that you can't with other paints. To me, DIY is the best paint for wet distressing. I would be able to come with a wet rag right now and distress these edges and it would look just like it was done with sandpaper and I never had to create dust or really sand or anything. And it can be done which you can wet distress with other brands, but with the DIY, I can come back and wet distress tomorrow. I can come back and wet distress next week. And it's the dampness in the water in that rag is going to pull the pigments out of this and, and lift it up. You have to be very careful that you don't go through every layer. It'll, But if you have that top coat in between the layers, you're not going to erase it with the water. So that's going to going to be the benefit. So it's a it's a good paint. I've been using it for probably about four years. I've been selling it for about three, three or four years. And it's it's a very good paint. And so that's when, when the clay-based paints, um, I know uh, Debbie, the lady who owns the company, painted her picnic table out back with all kinds of different colors of this. And it does just fine with it created that hard finish. So it, it does really good out there. And, and it's really good for, if you wanted to use it for fabric or something like that, you would water it down like 50-50 uh, just to stretch the pigments. And the pigments are actually dyeing the fabric. So that's, that's sort of how that works. Now you can paint fabric with the others as well, but this one is dyeing it with the pigments is, is the main thing. The, Next type of paint is Dixie Belle, and I'm a Dixie Belle retailer as well. I retail all of these, so I, you know, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm trying to show you the differences, but I'll, if you want to buy something, that's cool too. <laughs> okay, this is uh, Dixie Belle. This is called Chalk Mineral Paint. It's also very thick and creamy and luscious. It has the same sort of thickness as the DIY had as far as, as being thick enough to go on everything, but it has a little bit of a sheen and a little bit of a sort of like an emulsifier is, is the way I would put it. I'm always thinking of how things are in the kitchen. It, but this has an acrylic base. This is a chalk mineral paint, so it, it does have the minerals and the chalk and everything in it as well. So it also is gonna stick to any surface and you know, very little prep and all the same stuff that, you know, that all the brands have their claim to fame. But with this one having the acrylic base, it's all, it is, it's water-based. All these are water-based. So let me come back and, and say there's not a difference there as far as water base or acrylic base. But this has an acrylic fixative, I guess I should say. This is also no VOC and all that, so don't think they're adding, you know, dangerous stuff. But they have that in there because it 
it hardens on its own it has it doesn't have to have a top coat on it or any of that it's built in there to seal itself and self leveling i guess is the way to put it I'm not trying to you know be a dixie bell brochure here or anything but you stir it up to make sure that you know all the pigments haven't sank to the bottom or anything like that and also highly pigmented see it's just as thick going on the brush but if i want to do more than one layer i don't have to seal in between it saves me that step if my husband walks through and shakes the water off of his hands like that it's gonna i'll be able to just walk over here and wipe it off it's not gonna take the paint finish off with it you can still paint fabric you dilute it as well i can do a video on that if you want that's how i painted like uh what do you call it my apron and stuff like that i have quite a few things that i've painted with it hats and shoes and this and that but fantastic coverage it feels smoother going on as long as it's still wet at this point like right now say for the next probably 20 minutes or so 20 to 30 minutes i would be able to come back to this with the wet rag and wet distress in the same fashion that i told you i could do with the diy but then it's over after that uh and i will need to do my distressing with uh sanding pad if I'm wanting to distress because it will dry and it'll dry to a good hard finish that you want you know all of these I should be able to run over with my fingernail and scratch and not have the paint come off and that's important whenever you're you know taking the time and the effort to paint a piece of furniture that you don't want you know the first time somebody uses it for it to scratch off and a lot of that comes in the prep or in the preparation of your piece to get ready to paint and while all of these say you know no prep needed we'll stick to virtually anything and all that well we still have to use a little bit of common sense and know if it's a you know a piece of countertop laminate or something like that and and it's or a mirror and it's so slick that the paint doesn't have any kind of tooth or anything to grab then even with this type of paint that has the chalk and stuff added to it to make it adhere to things it's still it's not a miracle worker you still should go back and and prep surfaces that are just you know impossible for things to stick to with something like slick stick and scuff sanding so the DIY is already starting to dry a little bit and it will more as we go along but you can see the lighter see it on my arm see the lighter color starting to come in and see how much lighter that dries and a lot of people are shocked or disappointed or confused when they see their piece sort of changing colors before they their eyes it's going to get splotchy as it dries in some areas and then it's gonna be light all over but when you put your top coat on it be that you know wax or uh, big top or liquid patina or whatever in the DIY line it's going to bring it back to the original wet color so when you're working on a piece say if you're painting a canvas and you paint these flowers over here and then you look over there and they're all dull and they're not even the color you painted them you're like oh man how am I going to save this what am I going to do now once you top coat it then that adds that moisture back in and it'll go back to the original wet color that you painted on to begin with. Dixie Belle dries a little bit lighter and can do the same thing, but because it has a little bit of that uh, acrylic base built in, it, it doesn't dry as stark and dry looking. The other one I'm gonna try today is the Silk All-in-One. This is new. This is owned by Dixie Belle, but it's a completely different line and it's a completely different paint. This is not a chalk paint at all, but it is a mineral paint. It's called an All-in-One because it has a, a, like a primer, and we'll talk about that in just a second, and a top coat built in. So it's still gonna work like a, like a chalky style paint, because it's a mineral paint as far as you can paint over most anything with it but with silk 
there's two kinds of primers. There's, well, there's probably a million kinds, but there's two kinds in the furniture industry that we use a lot. And one is called a blocking primer. And that's where you believe you're gonna have bleed through or you have something like, I would probably need to use a blocking primer over where I just got this paint right here on this if I decide to go with a real light color. And that's gonna block stains and odors. Boss is what it's called in the Dixie Bell brand. Well, it has a little bit of that in it. and But then there's another type of primer that's called an adhesion primer. And that's, in Dixie Bell terms, that's called slick stick because that is gonna stick to slick surfaces and give adhesion to your paint when you put it over it. It's gonna take that laminate surface or that slick surface and give it a little little bit of tooth so that your paint will stick to it so you can't scratch it off later. Because that's the problem when you take something like the Sherwin-Williams paint that I started out with and oh, it looks so beautiful and you're so proud of yourself. You painted your piece of furniture, whatever color with whatever you had left over or you bought their sample thing and all that and added your own chalk to it. Well, if you didn't prep that surface right by cleaning it good, which we do with White Lightning on the Dixie Bell line, I clean it with whatever you're gonna clean it with, and that's gonna deglaze it a little bit and give it a little bit of tooth. So that's what helps in most instances. But with silk, because it doesn't have that chalk added to it that gives that little bit of tooth and grip, it's better to scuff sand is what it's called. You just use the little sanding pad and go over your piece just enough to give it just a little texture that you can feel with your hand. That's called tooth. That's, that gives it something to grab to. Well, uh, on most surfaces, you could use slick stick for that. And if, it, if I was painting a really slick surface with silk, how can you say that fast? Slick surfaces with silk, then I would probably still use the slick stick just in case. But in most instances, all that's required is the scuff sanding. So you, this is already has some texture to it and it's just a sample board. One other thing I'm, I'm gonna uh, say real quick is we recommend that you use a synthetic brush. Well, two different things here. Let me, let me go back and talk about, I hope I don't get lost in all these different little things. When you have a cheap chip brush like this, it's gonna leave uh, brush strokes on your piece. Part of you want that with something like a clay-based paint. It has that texture to it already, and that's part of the what draws you to it. That's what part of makes it a good paint. Now, Dixie Bell has, like, a, it's self-leveling, so it's going to smooth itself out flat as it dries to not give you those brush strokes, but you have to sort of help that along. If you're using a cheap chip brush, it's gonna be hard for any self-leveling product to get rid of those brush marks. So you may wanna sand or buff in between coats to get rid of that or just use a better brush. With silk, they always re recommend using a synthetic brush with the good, soft, nice bristles because you this paint, these paints are meant for to make things look old and farmhouse and distressed. Now with Dixie Belle, you can do other things. With the DIY, you can make it look like watercolor. And with the Dixie Belle, you can get a smooth finish. With the silk is for when you want that factory fin looking finish. When you're wanting, I mean, you can distress it. I'm not saying you can't, but I'm saying use the right tools when you want the right look. And with silk, that gives you such a silky, smooth, perfect finish. I mean, I've just seen some gorgeous pieces with it. And when you're using the DIY paint and the Dixie Belle paint, you can use your water mister as you go. If you start to feel some tug with your brush, if you feel like it's drying out and you're not getting the right coverage, well, you just use your mister bottle and you know, dampen your brush to begin with and all that. And that's how you get back to your flow. With silk, 
you don't use water. I mean, if you live in a really dry climate, you know, there's gonna be exceptions to every rule. But in general, for most of us that aren't living in a dry, arid climate, you're not gonna add any water, you're not gonna mist, you're not even gonna dampen your brush ahead of time. You want your brush really full of paint. See how thick and creamy this is? It's, it's a little bit thinner than Dixie Belle, but it has that same almost pudding-like look. I was gonna use chip brushes for everything, and so I am for this demo, but just know if I was painting this piece of furniture that's underneath it, I would be using a synthetic brush, loading a dry brush and loading lots of paint on my brush because you wanna get from one side to the other without having to back and forth, back and forth it. If you do have to back and forth it, then you start back at the beginning and come back over because this is the paint that's gonna give you that good, solid, strong, fancy finish. I mean, it just goes on so silky. How about that? So I really, if I was painting a piece of furniture, I would definitely be using a synthetic bristle brush. And then you also think about where you're gonna use your piece. There's a difference in what, you know, how much use is going to go on a piece that goes in your grandmother's room versus your eight-year-old's room. You know what I mean? So DIY after a curing ever, all of these have a cure time. Let me go over that real quick too. They all have a cure time. Now we have a dry time, which is about a half an hour with uh, any of them for to the touch. We say, uh, 20 to 30 minutes on DIY, an hour on Dixie Belle, and an hour on Silk. Um, as far as recoating, I would probably wait an hour on DIY and put a top coat in between. I would probably wait an hour on Dixie Belle, and I would probably wait an hour on um, Silk. When these are done, you'll see the three different sheens that they have. Silk already has a top coat built in, and that top coat is uh, sort of an eggshell. Not quite satin, uh, but what would be in, in the industry called an eggshell finish. But it's tough as nails. So if I wanted to paint some tables to go out on my patio or out poolside, well, for one, I would probably do any of these, but with the DIY, I would definitely have to put a top coat. And the top coats that these companies sell and that I sell through them are all water-based. They're, you know, kind of safe to be around and all that stuff. But Dixie Bell has what's called Gator Hide, and Gator Hide is water resistant and it's the toughest of their top coats. And if I was painting a dresser for my eight-year-old son's bedroom, I would use gator hide on top of probably any of them, to tell you the truth. If I was gonna use it outside, I would put gator hide on it. Even on top of the silk, which already has a tough top coat built in, if you wanted the overkill of adding another top coat to that because it was gonna be outside or whatever, you can do that. But this is UV resistant mildew resistant and uh, water resistant without all of that. But I will uh, say too, while we're on the subject of the uh, top coats and the big top, I would probably put a coat of the satin top coat on real thin to seal up this paint and the chalk that's in there that's exposed and toothy and grabbing things to seal that up before I started putting my gator hide on. So that's just a tip because you don't want your piece sucking all that gator hide down in there. Let it suck the, the satin top coat down in there and then put a couple of thin coats of gator hide over that. So top coat, absolutely necessary on the DIY. 
They say after the cure time, which is about a month for any of these, that your DIY should be hardened enough to not require that. I've never tried it. That's what they say. And I would say try that at your own, at your own risk. I would put a top coat. Um, and the same thing, after 30 days, it's not going to scrape off. You know, you're not going to scratch it off. It's not going to you know, look bad and all that. But if you, one more thing, if you wanted to, if you don't like the eggshell finish, you can come over this with a matte top coat and then make it look chalky. You can go over it with a satin to give it just a little bit more sheen. So if you don't like the eggshell finish that it's given, you can go on top of that with another top coat. You just don't have to. It's uh, good enough when you don't as they dry and the different textures. See the splotchiness of the DIY, that's just because it's dry, it's drying. This is dry. When Whenever we put the top coat on, it will go back to that color. The Dixie Belle is still wet, but it will look pretty similar to that. You can see it's drying a little bit. It'll look pretty similar to that when it dries. I guess I got my hands all in the green. The silk is going to look just that silky, you know, the whole time. So there are three different versions of the same type product. They're all really good for furniture painting, sign painting, canvas painting. I use these same ones on all of that. If you're wanting to have a beautiful solid finish on a piece and and you know have it looking like an heirloom for a long time i would choose the silk all in one if you're wanting to distress it a little bit do something fun uh blend because you mix, can mix water in uh with the dixie bell or the diy for blending you can bring this color into the next color and down you can't do that so much with silk because silk has the top coats and all that built in. And you would be diluting some of those ingredients. It's just not recommended. But with the chalk mineral paint, the regular Dixie Belle paint, that's perfect for getting a layered finish or a chippy finish or a textured finish by using all the add-ins and the other products they have. If you wanted to be artistic in that kind of way, I definitely would choose the Dixie Belle for an indoor piece, an outdoor piece, a kid's room piece, a grandma's, you know, distressed, vintage, any of those things, I would choose the Dixie Belle in a heartbeat. And the DIY uh, is what I would choose for a more artistic boho looking piece for something that I wanted to look out of the ordinary and I don't know rustic and distinct and clay like and it's it's just a there's it's just a different type of art form that you get with with the DIY than you do the Dixie Belle. If you had any questions I'm going to come back and answer them. I hope that helped you some to know the differences in the three paints. Well let me just say this real quick there's 20 colors and they're all muted and they're called Hampton inspired colors in the silk line. There's like 70 something colors in the Dixie Belle line. Plus you can mix and match any of them together and come up with hundreds and hundreds of options. And there's, I want to think right now, there's about 40 DIY colors. And so you have so many options and you can put a base coat of silk and come back and put DIY. You can, you know, you can do that if you wanted to as well. So I hope that helps. I appreciate you. If you have any questions, just message them to me or ask them on here and I'll be glad to answer them. If I don't know the answer, I'll get the answer. Have a good day. Bye.